Good morning, my friend Yuli Edelstein, Speaker of the Knesset, Dr. David Sharia Zcharia. Very, I'm very happy to hear about the cooperation with the United Nations Security Council, a very important cooperation. Distinguished mayors and officials from Israel and from around the world, dear friends. It's an honor to be here with you at the Muni World Conference because, as you know, if the last few years have taught us anything, is that, unfortunately, no major city is free from the threat of terror. Terrorists today are making use of all the tools of global communication in order to crowdsource terror. Their newest weapon, as you know, is this. They're using smart smartphones and social media to radicalize and recruit, inspire, incite, and instruct. And as lone wolf attacks against urban targets multiply, it's becoming increasingly clear. Urban security is national security. I deeply believe that in order to strengthen the security of our cities and our national security, we must enhance our cooperation, share best practices, and learn from each other's experience. The wave of Palestinian terror, which Israel faced beginning in September 2015, included hundreds of stabbing, shooting, ramming, and firebomb attacks. It started and centered on Jerusalem, a very, very sensitive urban area, as you know. One of the accomplishments that I'm most proud of as public security minister is the defeat of this wave of terror, especially in Jerusalem. Israel and the Israeli public police and emergency services have become, for better or worse, world experts in urban security. Our strategy for defeating terror in urban centers is built on three main pillars. Each of these pillars requires the cooperation between municipal authorities and the police, of course. The first pillar is perhaps old-fashioned, but it's critical, increasing the police's physical presence in public areas and sensitive locations. Especially important is increasing the number of police officers conducting foot patrol. Despite all of our technological advances, which of course I'll speak about shortly, there is still no substitute for an officer on the street, both in terms of providing security and quick response, and of course, a sense of security. Therefore, I dedicated a big part of the public security ministry budget to increasing the size and manpower of the police on our streets. We mapped out the specific areas and times which with the largest crowds or highest threat potential and deployed hundreds of patrol officers in those areas. We've also begun joint patrols between members of the national police and local municipal inspectors, which both demonstrate police presence and com combat quality of life crimes according to priorities defined jointly by the, by the municipality and local police. This model has been very, very successful and we intend to expand it to rural areas as well. A key challenge in enhancing urban security and combating radicalization is the existence of neighborhoods, often those populated by minorities, which not only suffer from a lack of police presence, but from a lack of trust between the police and the local population. When I became Minister of uh, Public Security, I led the development of an unprecedented plan a plan for improving trust and law enforcement among Israel's Arab minority. Now I see you here, the 
Commissioner Khakush, Deputy Commissioner. I appointed the first ever Arab Muslim Deputy Commissioner. He's here with us, Jamal Khakush. Yeah, let's give him a hand. And we invested hundreds of millions of shekels in opening up new police stations in Arab towns. And also, which is very, very important, recruiting hundreds, I hope more than hundreds in the future, of Israeli Arabs into the police. Because in order to build trust, it's very, very important to include our minorities into our national police. Together with building trust between the police and local populations, we must also ensure that the police are able to enforce law and order everywhere, and I mean it, everywhere, and that no neighborhood becomes a no man's land for terrorists and criminals. I therefore instructed the police to return to every neighborhood, including in the eastern parts of Jerusalem, so the terrorists would know that they have nowhere to hide. The second major pillar in our strategy to strengthen urban security is increasing the use of cutting edge technologies while also combating their misuse. We are, we are turning the Israeli police into a world leading smart police force. The fact is that despite the increase in the number of police officers, we'll never have enough to secure every public area or potential target. We therefore have invested extensively in, de in, in developing smart camera networks for Israel's cities. These smart camera networks bring together data from thousands of cameras, both police cameras and cameras belonging to other institutions, including those with special capabilities, such as, for example, license plate readers of cars, of course. The data is streamed into local command centers overseen by the district police. The Public Security Ministry has helped fund approximately 90 such networks in local authorities, including installing 7,500 cameras in public spaces. Because these networks integrate police and civilian cameras, they require a high degree of cooperation between the district police and no local authorities on many levels. We are now taking the next step and equipping all of our patrol officers, I hope you heard about it, with body cameras. Within just a few months, 12,000 officers will be equipped with these cameras, with which will put uh, our national police together with the London police and uh, NYPD to be the most advanced in this field. Our most advanced smart, smart camera network is in Jerusalem, the location uh, of the holy sites of three religions and unfortunately, as I mentioned, a central target of Palestinian terror. In Jerusalem, We've set up a groundbreaking command center based on technology developed primarily by Israeli companies. I know that you can see them, it, it, to see those technologies uh, later in uh, our exhibition. And we developed them uh, together with the Israeli police. When fully operational, this command center will integrate data from over 1,200 police cameras and over 1,000 cameras from other authorities. The Jerusalem Command Center uses advanced analytics to not only process all this data and, and identify security threats in real time, but to identify suspicious behavior and persons in order to prevent attacks before they occur. Jerusalem, as you know, is our eternal capital, and we will do whatever is necessary to ensure its security, protect its holy sites, and defeat all who threaten its peace. Technology, technology of course, is a double-edged 
sword. And as I mentioned, terrorists are using communications technologies and especially social media to incite hate, inspire attacks, and instruct lone wolf terrorists. In order to effectively counter the threat of terror against our cities, we must counter the incitement that drives it. So we've taken several steps, including outlawing radical groups that were leading the incitement to terror, groups such as the Islamic Movement, Northern Branch, uh, groups like the Morabitun and Morabitat that were inciting to uh, violence over the Temple Mount. And let me say clearly that we will not allow any group to incite or carry out violence at sensitive religious sites such as the Temple Mount. We've also enhanced our ability to monitor incitement online, which has helped us prevent, and listen to the numbers, to prevent more than 200 attacked. I'm also advancing legislation, which the Speaker of the Knesset mentioned, that will allow us to obtain a court warrant requiring, for example, that Facebook and other social media platforms immediately remove illegal and inciting content that might lead to terror attacks. However, this is not enough. Ultimately, the social media companies themselves must share responsibility for stopping the spread of incitement online. Those companies already gather a huge amount of information about all of us, as you know, in order to make money. So, in, as I see it, they must use those same capabilities also to save lives. Because, dear friends, the right to free speech is sacred, but it must always, always be balanced with the right to life and safety. I believe that the international community must work together to devise the standards and regulations that will require the social media companies to take responsibility and proactively remove terrorist contents. The third pillar in our strategy for strengthening urban security is widening the circles or layers of security. I mean expanding the numbers and the capabilities of those who can identify and stop attacks other than the police officers. The difference between an attack with minimal casualties and one with many is often only a few seconds in reaction time. So the next circle of security after the police in Israel is civilian security guards. In Israel, there are around 35,000 armed security guards and 70,000 security inspectors at the entrances to schools, kindergartens, hospitals, government offices, and many other locations. These, these guards are often the first to identify an attack. Several have laid down their lives in order to protect others. I therefore advanced legislation which expanded the authority of these security guards. For example, in areas of increasing risk, such as train stations and government buildings, security guards are now in Israel authorized to demand identification and detain suspicious persons until the police arrive by force if necessary. This adds an additional circle of security at sensitive urban site. So, dear friends, these three pillars, increasing police presence, expanding the use of technology, and empowering additional circles of security has enabled us to greatly increase urban security, particularly in the face of lone wolf terror. When the home front becomes the front lines, municipalities, police, civilian security, and even ordinary citizens must be prepared to work together 
to end attacks and save lives. Each is a critical link in the chain of national resilience. Israel and the Israel police stand ready to share our knowledge and experience with all of our friends around the world and of course with you. If we stand together, I know that we can overcome terror. We can secure our cities and we can protect the safety of the men, women and children who depend on us day and night. I wish you all a productive conference and enjoyable visit in Israel. Thank you very much.